Welcome back to Bible Nuggets. I'm Andy Blaylock, joined by Brother Chris Hammond. Hello again. Good to see you as always. Great time. We have wonderful, wonderful nuggets in store for you today. But before we get started, our theme verse is Matthew 4, 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So for today's nugget, we're going to go back to that little category that we call seemingly unimportant details. But they are. <laughs> And we're going to see the the Pharisees level a a charge at Christ Uh over in the Gospel of John. But before we do that, let me set the background a little if I can. So Jesus was in Jerusalem at this time. He's just proclaimed on the last day of the feast, that Feast of Tabernacles. And and the Bible calls that very last day, that great day Mm -hmm. of the feast. He said that if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Now, as you can imagine, this did not sit really well with the Pharisees. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it did not. And they, they literally are sending officers out to take him, to, mm-hmm. to arrest him at this point. These officers come back empty-handed, mm. and the Pharisees, are they're angry about it. And, yeah. and finally, Nicodemus steps in, and, and he says, well, wait a minute. Are we going to judge a man before we've even heard And so that's kind of a little bit of the background of the story. And Andy, if you would read John 7, verses 50 through 53 for us. Absolutely. Verse 50, Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet, and every man went into his own house. So the nugget that we're going to look at today uh, comes from this seemingly unimportant detail, (laughs) really, in in Pharisees' response to Nicodemus, and and some other seemingly unimportant details that we're going to see in the Old Testament. But when we get them together, they make a very important detail. (laughs) Yes, they do. Like, for instance, where they ask Nicodemus if any prophet has ever arisen out of Galilee. Right. So... The first thing I think we we should see from this is this incredible prejudice yes. that the Pharisees have in their hearts. Mm-hmm. After all, you know, Galilee, that's where all those, you know, those backwards people live, <laughs> way up north up there in Galilee. Yeah, you know? they talk like, yeah, yeah they talk yeah. funny, yeah. <laughs> now, Jerusalem was, was roughly in the geographic center of the province of Judea. Mm-hmm kind of the the center, if you will, of of Israel, and it was where all the culture, all, you know, all the bigwigs, all the Pharisees would want to be. Yep. And directly to the north of Judea was the province of Samaria. Now, we know how the Jews felt about the Samaritans. They didn't like them. It's where the the Samaritans, they were half Jewish, half Gentile. They would, they thought of them as half-breeds. Yes. Very prejudiced towards them. And then just further north of Samaria is when you got to the province of Galilee yep. at that time. But to the Jews of Judea, people of Galilee, backwards. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Way, way inferior to yep. the Jews who were in Judea. After all, you you had to go through Samaria. Yep. Just to get to Galilee. That is not okay. <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the contrarian today, Brother Chris. <laughs> Wasn't Jesus born in Bethlehem, Judah, which would be in the province of Judea? Well, he was. Aha, I got him. But uh oh. He grew up in Nazareth, yep. which was in the province of Galilee. Well, there you go. But our <laughs> nugget today is looking at the prophets. From Galilee. After all, the Pharisees were basically trying to say that Jesus was, how do we say this, disqualified right. from being a prophet because he was from Galilee. It's exactly what they were trying to do is just, just completely disqualify anything that Jesus was saying. Yeah. Well, let me state, I think, the obvious first here. You know, the Bible never states that no prophet could arise out of Galilee. Yeah. That's true. So if Jesus was the first prophet to ever arise out of Galilee, that'd be okay. It'd be yeah. scripturally sound. However, let's explore the Pharisees' charge here that no prophet had ever arisen out of Galilee. Yeah. Maybe it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would ask where we start from there. Okay. <laughs> well, let's do this. We have to go back to the Old Testament, really okay. to the book of 2 Kings chapter 14, if we would. 
And I'll ask you, if you would, to read verses 23 to 25 of 2 Kings 14. Absolutely. And see, this is where that unimportant detail, important detail comes into play, right? (laughs) Here we go. Verse 23. In the 15th year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria and reigned 40 and one years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, which was of Gath-hefer. Okay. What did I just read? Well, there, <laughs> there's a prophet mentioned here in this passage mm-hmm. that I believe our listeners probably have heard about before. Just a little bit. A man named Jonah, but... Yeah. Is this the Jonah of the Jonah and the whale? Other, you know, couldn't another man named Jonah be listed here in Second Kings fourteen? It could, but it is the Jonah because it says in Jonah one one. It reads this way: Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai. Oh, that's the guy from Second Kings fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> it's all coming together. <laughs> Bear with us. <laughs> so we are speaking about the same Jonah. Yeah, and it says here that he was a prophet of Gath. Hefer. Yes. So where is Gath Hefer? It the only time in Gath that Gath Hefer is ever mentioned in the scripture is way back in Joshua mm-hmm. chapter 19. Mm-hmm. Now it's known by its full name there, Gitta Hefer, but it is the same Gath Hefer, and it is mentioned where it's in the borders of Zebulon. Uh oh which is, guess where? Oh. In Galilee. There it is. See, there it is. <laughs> and so you see Jonah, as we said, which was from gath Hefer, is from where Galilee was in the time of Jesus Christ. Exactly. Another prophet had arisen out of Galilee before. His name was Jonah. Yeah. So just like so many times that happens in the scripture, the Pharisees didn't know their Bible very well. And if you notice, Brother Chris, you mentioned it when we read they said, they even said, search and look. Search and look the Bible. There isn't. Well, we did. There is. And they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. These, I, I hope this speaks to you that sometimes when you see something that looks like it's seemingly unimportant, it may be yes. a very vital, you know, detail yeah. that we need to see. And uh, these, you know, again, very seemingly unimportant details here in, in both Joshua 19 and Second Kings 14 really help us to understand why Jesus was not the first prophet out of Galilee. But I'll say this, he was the most important prophet. Yes, he was. Amen to that. And it always reinforces, which I think we say on the show a lot, but I think it's good because we drill it into people's minds that God is true and every man's alive, right? that he is always faithful to his word. We hope this was a blessing to you and we'll see you next time.